what started for me, Abinas? Started, ma'am. Now, uh, can you just see it? Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to our uh, weekly mentoring hour. I'm so glad that uh, all of you could join us this uh, morning. Uh, thank you. This morning, we're just going to have a uh, time of uh, a round of uh, questions that you can ask, and uh, our faculty will do our best to answer uh, your questions. Uh, before we begin, um, uh, can we just pause for a word of prayer? Can I ask one of you to lead us in prayer, please? Anyone lead us in prayer? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you once again for this hour of mentoring. And we pray, Father, that as the leaders through your word, Father, that we will be able to apply whatever we're learning, Father, in our study, Father. And we pray that we'll be able to apply the same in our lives. We also pray for a blessing upon our entire faculty and a blessing upon all our students here at the Bible College. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, so this morning, uh, time is open for each one of you to um, ask your questions. Your questions can be related to anything that you have been studying in your courses or uh, questions related to uh, the Bible, your quiet time, uh, you know, what you've been reading, studying during your uh, uh, devotions, daily meditations. It can also be questions uh, related to life and ministry. Uh, so. Uh, please feel free to post your questions in the chat section and our faculty is here and we'll do our best to uh, answer your questions. Or you could even uh, uh, unmute your mics and ask your questions, which is even better. So we could we'll do our best to answer your questions. So the time is open for all of you. Any questions? Anyone else? While we wait uh, for uh, for uh, all of you to post your questions in the chat section. Uh, you know, we've all, uh, we're nearing uh, the end of our uh, uh, semester. Uh, so would any of you like to share your learning experiences, uh, what you enjoyed, anything new that you learned, any new insights? How has your semester been? What has your experience been at All People's uh, Bible College? Anyone likes to share? Yes, please go ahead, Sanjay. Yes, but so just a short. I just wanted to share. Like, I mean, so far it's been a it's been a, an amazing experience for me as a student of the Bible College. I mean, it's so almost a year now, and uh, one one thing was uh, it's it's always good to hear the Word of God. You know, it's it's always refreshing, and not not only that, it 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 is like as we go through the day, there's there's, there's always something to take away and apply in our lives. At, towards the end of the, the session. I mean, there's always some inspiring thought that we can carry through the day. And so this is not just something uh, we, we get once a week. It's like on a daily basis, we're being refreshed by the word. And it kind of encourages us you know, to stand strong in the faith. Otherwise, if I'm not mistaken, an average person who probably just goes to church once a week. I mean, throughout the week, there's so, much, so many thoughts and so many things that are bombarding their mind. But we are getting to hear the word and not only hear the word, but to uh, discuss the word and to study the word on a daily basis. 
it's 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 like living waters on, on on a daily basis for us i mean i just like to leave it at that and it's been so inspiring with the discussions we had in the classroom and and you know the the kind of the, the oneness in the body of christ i just wanted to share that thank you sanjay thank you so much for uh, uh, sharing your experience your learning experience here at all people's uh, church bible college the last few uh, months uh, anyone else would like to share? Uh, we have a question here from Jeffina, uh, but the question was asked uh, by Deeksha, and the question is, if the devil can't read our mind, how does he take control of our minds and our thoughts? Uh, thank you for your question, uh, Deeksha, and thank you for posting it, Jeffina. Uh, yes, while the devil can't read our minds in the same way that God can, uh, he can influence our thoughts and, uh, you know, manipulate our minds in various ways. Uh, so, you know, the devil often uses temptation uh, just to plant thoughts or desires in our mind that can lead us away from God's uh, will. And uh, these temptations uh, basically will weaken our desires and, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, bring in instant fear and uh, make it more challenging for us to resist uh, those uh, 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 tempting thoughts and desires. Uh, the devil is also, uh, you know, described as uh, the father of lies in John chapter 8, verse 44. Um, and he, we know that he de deceives people. Uh, and how does he deceive people? Is he deceives people by distorting the truth and uh, creating confusion in their minds? Uh, so through lies and deceptions, uh, you know he can uh, he can lead us astray. Uh, the devil can also spiritually attack us, uh, you know, uh, and uh, and the spiritual attacks is aimed at uh, basically uh, you know causing us to lose our faith and our trust in God and, uh, you know, causing doubt and uh, fear to be instilled uh, in us. And uh, so he can uh, attack us through uh, negative thoughts, uh, through, uh, <coughs> you know, guilt and shameful thoughts and feelings of, uh, you know, unworthiness. Uh, and also which will lead you to question uh, God's love, God's faithfulness, God's uh, goodness uh, in your um, life. And he can also manipulate, uh, you know, circumstances in, or events in your, li uh, in your life which can uh, uh, trigger those uh, negative thoughts and uh, emotions and can bring in a lot of uh, uh, doubt, can bring in a lot of hopelessness, despair, uh, and uh, resentments, um, uh, and also the devil can use our past uh, uh, failures, past weaknesses, traumas, uh, you know, uh, sinful habits of, and failures that we have uh, uh, gone through, uh, things that have been unresolved in our lives, emotions, uh, insecurities, uh, you know, uh, 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 ties that we have that are not yet uh, broken, you know, and he can use all of this to gain a foothold in our uh, minds. And that's why the Bible, uh, Paul writes and tells us uh, in Romans, you know, that we need to renew, renew our minds every day, you know, uh, 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 so that we will know what is God's good, pleasing and perfect will. So it's important that we renew our minds. And how do we renew our minds? We renew our minds with God's word. And what is God's word? God's word is the truth. So we replace the lies that he uh, instills in our minds, he feeds in our minds with the truth of God's word. And uh, we know Jesus said that, uh, you know, uh, in, in his high priestly prayer in John chapter 17, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, sanctify uh, Jesus' prayer for the believers is sanctify them by the truth. And, uh, you know, your word is the truth. And we know that the truth will set us uh, free. Okay. So I hope this uh, helps, uh, Diksha. Uh, Nancy, if you want yes. to add anything. Yes, Pastor can, Serena. So I, I was also thinking that, uh, um, yes, the demon spirits, they can influence our minds. Uh, and though they don't have knowledge of everything, there's only one person who knows 
everything that is god and he knows what we are thinking god, only god knows what we are thinking um but as you rightly put it demons manipulate so what they can also do is they can do a little bit of guesswork on the basis of uh, uh, their observation of us uh, they they know what we are sharing with people and you know they just observe us and then again they can use that to um uh, really work uh, along that and then you know try to influence us and tempt us and get us so just that one additional thought that i wanted to share thank you thank you pastor nancy did that help diksha nancy you have to help me with the chat if there are any questions please yes yes just sending it across Uh, so yes, uh, uh, Jeffina's uh, um, post posted the question. Does it mean that the devil uses the weaknesses of our flesh? Uh, yes, he does. Uh, he can use our flesh, and that is why uh, you know we need to, uh, like Paul writes in his letters, that we need to you know uh, uh, put to death the deeds of the flesh. And we need to walk in the spirit, be led in the spirit, and live in the spirit, which means basically we need to feed our spirit man, and we feed our spirit man uh, with God's word, the truth in God's word, uh, and what God has spoken over us, and what God has spoken regarding us in his uh, word. And yes, we need to deprive our flesh, uh, the passions and the desires, uh, because, you know, how are we tempted? We are tempted when... Um, uh, when we are led away uh, with our own uh, desires, it's not, uh, you know, yes, Satan uses that to, you know, further the temptation, but we are tempted when we are, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 when we are led away by our own passions and that gives a way to uh, sin. Yes. Did that help? Okay, uh, sorry, my chat uh, is not working. It's just buffering from the time I've uh, logged in. Um, so we'll just move on to the next question uh, uh, by Joseph Williams. Uh, Joseph says, why have those who were once fervent in prayer uh, become cold? Uh, Pastor Nancy, would you like to help with this? Yes, sure, Pastor Selena. So, uh there can be many reasons why somebody who is uh, so strong in their uh, prayer life you now suddenly is you know, finding it hard. Uh, and I, I can think of reasons like uh, delay. When we are waiting on the Lord and the fulfillment has not yet come, that can be a cause of discouragement or uh, disappointment that we expected. We stood in prayer and we trusted God for a certain uh, result, but you know the outcome was not exactly how we envisioned it. So uh, one could be facing disappointment. So that also can can you know uh, bring a person down, and you know, maybe they're not so fervent in prayer anymore. Uh, and I think uh, the other thing is to just ha not have a uh, like a strong personal devotion. So when we don't spend time in the word, when we don't spend time praying in the spirit, or we don't spend time in prayer in general, what also happens is, you know, the fire that we could, uh, that we carry for the Lord can kind of uh, become dull. So these are the three main reasons that I can think of. Uh, so if, if one can strengthen themselves to overcome discouragement, disappointment and even maintain a very strong uh, like personal strength in God, uh, then you know we can continue to have a, a strong or a if you want to call it like a fiery fervent prayer life throughout. And I'm reminded of a scripture from Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. It says that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith 
and patience inherit the promises so the writer of the hebrews he's saying don't become weak um you know in god or in other words you know he's using sluggish don't become sluggish slow weak instead of that be like those who have received god's promises but what did they employ two things we need faith and we need a lot of patience okay so faith and patience both are required if we don't have both of these um you know we may find ourselves you know uh, fainting time to time and uh, as long as we we keep ourselves strong in god and overcome disappointment discouragement uh, our prayer life can remain you know powerful and fervent i i hope that helps thank you i hope that helps sir uh, joseph just like to uh, thank you pastor nancy uh, just like to add that uh, you know there are also external factors such as stress uh, you know uh, busyness in life trials uh, that can distract us from prayer that can eat into our uh, prayer time uh, so it can be challenging to you know focus on prayer to keep uh, you know uh, that time Uh, specifically to pr for prayer because we are so engaged with the things of the world it can be our job it can be our life it can be the busyness of this uh, uh, life uh, it can also be sin and guilt uh, sometimes unconfessed sin and guilt can also uh, create a barrier in one's relationship with god and can cause us to distance away uh, from god and you know cause us to be uh, Uh, uh uh you know uh, dry in our prayer life also that you know uh, this loss of passion uh uh you know there's a complacency that sets in uh, you know and also a spiritual stagnation because we think we've reached a point where uh, you know i'm very prayerful i've been prayerful i've received answers i've received breakthroughs uh, so there can be even a kind of a spiritual uh, 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 complacency a lethargy stagnation also can be spiritual pride at uh, times as well um and also uh, if we neglect our spiritual disciplines like you know reading god's word meditating on god's word uh, fellowshipping with believers because we we've come we feel that we've come to a place where uh, we are strong spiritually in our prayer life and uh, and satan can use that to also bring our uh, downfall i hope that uh, helped joseph Uh, yes, Pastor Selina. He says thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry uh, about the, the chat section that's not working. Okay. Uh, anyway, we'll move on. Um, uh, Shiv Kumar's uh, question is: Can a believer watch movies and other entertainment uh, uh, programs? Uh, well, uh, the, uh, the scripture passage that comes to my mind is First Corinthians chapter. The ten verse twenty three, where it says, "You know, I have a right to do anything," uh, you, uh, you say, "but not everything is beneficial." I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. You know, uh, or if you look at it in another version, everything is uh, uh, permissible, but not everything is beneficial. First Corinthians ten twenty uh, three. So uh, you need to ask yourself this question. Uh, yes, you can watch movies, but is it worth the time? You know, uh, because of the content in the movies uh, uh, or in the in the entertainment programs. Uh, if you're basically talking about serials, or if you if you're watching some entertainment program like a like a quiz, which is fine, or um, Or a talent show, or uh, you love cooking, and so you're uh, watching, uh, you know, the Master Chef programs. Well, that's fine because you get a lot of cooking tips from that. Or you, you're, uh, you're interested in quiz, uh, quizzing. You're interested in, you know, ex uh, uh, knowing, uh, getting more knowledge. That's fine. But if you're talking about serials, then if you look at uh, uh, this, uh, uh, most of the serials, if you watch them, they're filled with. Uh, hate and envy and pride and jealousy and uh, uh, you know uh, murder and um, mm, 
uh, you name it, you know, pa uh, uh, passions, such as, uh, uh, which is, uh, 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 you know, sinful passions, lustful passions. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, nowadays, uh, you know, uh, 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 these uh, the, this entertainment programs have also a lot of content to adultery. It's okay to marry, uh, divorce. Uh, so what are people learning from this? You know, is, is it beneficial? You're permitted to watch it, but is, is it going to really um, benefit you? And also uh, a few scripture passages that say in Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, you know, do not conform yourself uh, to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing uh, of your mind. Uh, you know, um, Ephesians 4, 23 says, be made new in the attitude of your minds. So if all of these, uh, you know, content or movies that you're watching is, uh, you know, uh, going to instill lustful, sinful passions and desires, uh, you know, then uh, because it's going to be this content is going to be stored in your subconscious mind. It's going to come out when you are, uh, you know, just lying down or your mind is uh, at rest. Uh, you can you can see yourself, you know, uh, engaging in, in those lustful thoughts because you've been watching that kind of content. And um, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, uh, 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 Paul writes and says, finally, brothers or sisters, you know, whatever is true, right, noble, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy, think about such things. So if you have to think about such things, you have to watch such things, read uh, such things. And uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 2 says, you know, set your minds on things above and not on earthly uh, 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 things. Um, so, you know, uh, and Second Corinthians 10 uh, verse 5 says, we need to take every thought captive uh, in obedience to Christ Jesus. Um, and so it's important what we feed our minds with because the battle is in the mind. And hence we need to uh, feed our minds with if you feed our mind with the right things, with the pure things, with the true things, the noble things, the lovely and admirable, praiseworthy things, you will think about such things, you will live such things, and you will, uh, you know, walk in in that truth, and it will feed your spirit man and not your uh, fleshly human uh, nature. I hope that uh, helped. I, uh, uh, Shiv Kumar. Nancy, would you like to pass it? Nancy, would you like to? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think you covered you covered it quite thoroughly, Pastor Selena. Uh, all I wanted to say is that uh, in today's world, we have the privilege of even reading up, uh, uh, you know, a, a review about the movie and actually knowing what content it brings. So, if at all, you know, uh, you we we are thinking, and I I know of parents who do this uh, before the kids can watch uh, a. A, a certain movie or a program they read up about it and then they give permission and say yeah okay you can watch it's it has good content or it doesn't have good content so since we have to be so careful about what goes in because what goes in comes out and so uh being careful about the uh entertainment content that we are consuming uh is very very important yeah just that thank you uh Thank you, Pastor Nancy. So we'll uh, move on to our next question uh, by Sitikinu Robert. Sitikinu, good to uh, hear from you after a long time. Um, this question is, how can we as people of God effectively navigate the temptations and challenges present in, uh, in the corporate environment? while remaining steadfast in our faith and commitment to serving others. So how can we as people of God effectively navigate the temptations and challenges present in the corporate environment while remaining steadfast in our faith and commitment to serving others? Pastor Nancy, would you like to help in answering that? Yes, sure. Uh, so Sitkenu, what you are describing is life itself whether we are in the corporate setting or anywhere else, because uh, none, nobody is spared of temptations and challenges. But it is understandable that in the corporate en environment with the uh, high work pressure, there there are uh, you know temptations um, that can like if if believers succumb to it, it can lead them away from God. So what one could do is to first of all be really strong 
in the Lord, to be really strong in the word. Uh, and of course, if it is if there is a possibility of um, you know being part of a fellowship or uh, a group of believers who understand the corporate environment to maybe be a part of that so that you know people can strengthen one another. And uh, with regard to um, specific principles, I would refer back to the book, the APC publication, um, you know, uh, workplace, right? Uh, what is it called, Pastor Selena? Princi uh, timeless principles of the principles workplace. Principles of the workplace. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they address um, many specific issues, and um, uh, I, I'm sure that can be a blessing to you. I, I hope that helps. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Nancy. Um, uh, just to add to Siddhi um, uh, question, uh, it's basically uh, knowing uh, what the Word of God, uh, you know, uh, 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 tells us how we need to live, and it's just obeying that. So, for example, if you look at Daniel, you, you could look at Daniel in the Bible, and he was somebody who like worked in in today's uh, corporate world uh, but uh, look at what uh, how look at how daniel lived his life you know uh, when he was supposed daniel chapter one when he was supposed to eat from they were served food from the king's table uh, daniel knew that this was not the kind of food that uh, he was supposed to eat because uh, he was very young he was about 13 uh, 13 or 14 he's very young but he knew the kind of food he knew the commandments um, uh, he was taught the laws, uh, the, the Torah, the commandments, and he knew that this was not the food that he was to eat because this food was not according to the, the standards that God had uh, ordained for them as uh, his people. Um, the kind of meat, the, the wine, the food was offered to idols, to the Babylonian gods. Um, and uh, so he takes a stand. Right, a simple thing like food, but we see uh, Daniel uh, takes a stand, and also when uh, you know the uh, the prayer. Uh uh, the law was passed that you know no one should pray to any other uh, god or man for the next thirty uh, days. But what does Daniel do? He knows that he has to pray. He and how does he pray? He has to face towards Jerusalem. So he opens his window, and he does what he uh, uh, was used to doing. And uh, uh, we see that even um, uh, the officials try to uh, catch Daniel. Uh, you know, in some way in his work, but he was um, uh, he was a man of honesty, integrity, uh, committed to his task, uh, did what was honoring in God's sight. So they could not find any fault in his work. So just simple, basic principles. And how did Daniel know all this? Uh, it was not just that he was a prophet and superly anointed by God. So he was led by God, unlike us. No, he just knew what God's commandments, what was the laws, what the Torah had commanded him, what he had uh, learned, and he was just uh, following that. So I think how you can navigate temptations in the corporate world is, um, and remain steadfast to our faith is just know what the word of God says and do that and obey that uh, in that situations that you face. Did that help, uh, Siddhikinu? Uh, Pastor Selina, so Sitkenu has uh, responded. Uh, he says, uh, firstly, that uh, 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 he's saying thank you and uh, for the insight and for sharing the book. And then later he says, thanks, Pastor Selina. Actually, the question came now as I have logged in from my office. And that point of view is very uh, point to point. OK, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Nancy. Thank you, Siddiqueno. Good to hear from you. Uh, so we'll move on to the next question. Uh, Jafina's question, are angels anointed? Um, I, uh, basically, anointing means the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so um, uh, 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 yes, in the Bible, uh, the concept of angels being anointed with oil as humans were uh, you know, in some contexts is not explicitly mentioned in the Bible. Um, 
you know, but uh, anointing is uh, explicitly mentioned in the Bible when it comes to uh, individuals, uh, you know, uh, who are ordained by God to do specific roles uh, or are called into specific offices such as prophets, priests and kings in the Old Testament. Uh, so angels being spiritual beings uh, do not go the same undergo the same uh, rituals or ordinations as we humans do. Uh, but yes, uh, angels are ordained by God. They're messengers, agents, uh, agents of God uh, to carry out his will and purpose. Uh, and I don't think they uh, need anointing uh, the same way as we humans do, because uh, we need the anointing. Uh, anointing basically means the presence and the power of the Holy uh, Spirit. So. I um, just sharing what I know. Pastor Nancy, would you like to add? Uh, yes, Pastor Selena. So anointing, as uh, you already stated, we don't see uh, angels being anointed with oil or you know any such actions. But they are uh, anoint. We, I mean, I think we could look at them as being empowered. So in that sense, we can say that. They have the empowering of God to serve in a certain manner. Uh, now, I don't know if we can exactly use the term anointed for that, but they are empowered by God. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I hope that um, helped. Uh, we'll move on to the next question um, by Joseph Williams. The Bible teaches that speaking in tongues edifies both the individual and the church, uh, how should we pray? Would you like to help us, Nancy? Yes, I can. But I think we've missed a question from Komal. So Komal had a question before that. However, we can okay. address uh, Joseph's and then come back to Komal. Uh, please let me know if you got that question. No, uh, I don't have that question. You don't just, have that question. No. OK, yeah. just a moment. Let me send it yeah. to you. Yes, I just sent you Pumal's question. Thank so, you. Uh, okay, no, no problem. Thank you. Uh, so uh, Joseph says the Bible teaches that speaking in tongues edifies. How should we pray? Okay, so uh, Joseph, when we pray in tongues for personal edification, we can pray either by ourselves or we can pray in a a corporate setting or with other believers. Now, since the personal prayer language of tongues, you know, um, it's for it's for us. So we could either pray, you know, under our breath, or we can be a little louder. It's up to us. Uh, so that's how we can pray, and we can pray at any time. We can pray uh, in a scheduled manner, or we can, as in, we can set aside time. Uh, and pray in those those uh, uh, in in that moment, or we can just do it spontaneously. So that's how praying individually works. But when it comes to a church setting, uh, there are certain guidelines that the Bible gives us. So uh, for us to understand the guidelines, we can study the passage from First Corinthians chapter fourteen, where Paul talks about the use of tongues in a congregational setting. So he says, <laughs> if we are praying in a group setting, then um, actually our neighbors or the people around will not be edified unless the speaking in tongues is a message. And um, that message should have an interpretation. Uh, and that requires another the operation of another gift called as uh, you know, the gift of interpretation of tongues. So in a congregational setting, when we are practicing speaking of tongues, um, you know, the the way another person will be edified is when the message is understandable by them. Now, having said this, uh, when one is praying in tongues as personal prayer language in a congregational setting, that would still be okay, provided all the people are, um, you know, like they're all believers and they understand what's going on. 
so uh, we need to keep that in mind if if we are going to pray loudly in tongues in a setting where unbelievers are going to walk in then they will be confused they won't understand unless there is interpretation so when it comes to the corporate setting there are many guidelines uh, which we can learn from first corinthians chapter 14 i hope that helps thank you Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Uh, I hope that uh, helps answering your question, uh, uh, Joseph. We'll move to the next question. Uh, before we look at Komal's question, we will uh, just look at uh, Shimi's question. It says, is, uh, is hell created by God? Because we can only see in scriptures that God created the heavens and the earth. If God created hell, what can the, uh, what can the reference we can give? Or what is the reference we can give? If it wasn't God who created hell, does that mean apart from God, even Satan has the power to create things and bring uh, things into uh, existence? Uh, so, uh, yes, you know... Uh, while the Bible does not explicitly state that God created hell, uh, you know, uh, but we read in Matthew chapter 25, or verse 41, uh, where Jesus speaks about the final judgment when he says, uh, you know, uh, then he will say to those on the left, depart from me, you cursed into the uh, eternal fire prepared for uh, the devil and his angels. So this verse suggests that, yes, hell was prepared uh, not for... Uh, uh, for uh, for us uh, uh, humans who were created in God's image and likeness, but it's basically uh, prepared for the devil and his angels, uh, which implies that there is, uh, yes, uh, uh, an arrangement for their uh, punishment and for those who rebel against God. Uh, and also we uh, read in Revelation chapter 20, verse um, <clears throat> sorry, 15, uh, 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 where it uh, talks about the lake of fire, uh, where it indicates, you know, a, a place of eternal punishment for the wicked. Uh, and it says, if anyone's name is not found in the book of life, they will be thrown into uh, the lake of fire. So yes, these uh, uh, passages of scripture uh, uh, suggest or imply or, or tell us that uh, hell does exist. And if does exist, it uh, you know, it would have been created uh, by God and, you know, uh, and there is consequences for divine um, uh, judgment. But yes, uh, you know, there's not, there is no biblical reference to, uh, uh, you know, details uh, or explanations of the, of the origin or creation of uh, uh, hell. Uh, I hope that uh, helped answer your question. Uh, Pastor Nancy, would you like to add uh, anything or should we move to the next question. Uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so we'll move on to uh, the next question, a uh, Komal's question. I think we'll I'll take uh, Komal's question as the last one, and then I think that's the last one, right? And then we'll end the call because we're almost nearing time. Uh, Komal's question is: I know one family. Okay, uh, I think she has so two there are questions. Two, yeah, two yeah. questions. So we'll uh, we'll uh, move to the the first question that she Komal has asked. Uh, we say God is love, and when we see that in the Old Testament, there are a lot of killings of people and infants. Also, uh, infants cannot uh, uh, do any sin, but why uh, are they killed? No other book has this much of killing. So can you uh, tell me about this? Um, Pastor Nancy, would you like to share? Yes, I can share my thoughts. Yes. Um, so we do know that God is a God of love. But when we ho whole understand his nature in whole, we recognize that he's also a God of justice. And uh, which is why when sin corrupted the world, there needed to be a sacrifice made for redemption to take place. And so knowing that God is both a God of love and justice, we notice, uh, particularly in the Old Testament, before Jesus uh, had, you know, uh, done his work, that there are many divine judgments that take place. Uh, and this, this is also because of, you know, sinful 
selfishness of the people and disobedience. And so because of the actions, the wrong actions of people, there are all these divine judgments um, and uh, under which you know we see things like people being killed or infants also being killed. So um, you know that that's how we look at it. Now we can definitely ask the question, why didn't God stop it if he's a God of love? But you know, as we are saying that there are things that are um, there are laws that are in the world that are set, right? So even God had to work out a plan, and we know that He's a God of love because Jesus came and He He made a, a restitution for such things. Now that we have uh, the Lord Jesus and ha having putting our faith in Him releases grace and forgiveness on our lives. Uh, that is something that you know we can preach about and uh, yeah so that is like in a short way uh, because we have we have only one minute left i hand yeah. it back to you pastor Selina. thank you pastor nancy just like to add two thoughts that when uh, adam and eve sin sin corrupted not only them but sin passed on to the generations right up to us and will pass on to the preceding generations or the coming generations Second thing, also sin corrupted the entire creation that God created perfect. And that's why Paul says that, you know, creation uh, uh, writes in the book of Romans that creation groans, uh, you know, uh, for its uh, to be reinstated to its original design and uh, position. But uh, why children, uh, God is a God of love. He's also a God of justice and mercy. Uh, but Exodus chapter 20 verses 5 and 6 says that, you know, God says that uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of their parents, the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my uh, commandments. So God is very clear in what he has stated in his commandments, uh, that is, he's a God who punishes uh, the children for the sins of their parents, the third and fourth generation, but also shows love to a thousand uh, generations. So that is who God is. But yes, he's a God of love. He shows mercy as well. Uh, so uh, uh, through this, people can at least learn th that there is consequences of sin and the consequences of sin is death and they would not take God for uh, granted. Uh, we'll stop here. We don't have time to answer Komal's um, uh, uh, question, the uh, other question. Uh, we have that question with us and we will answer that in the uh, in our next mentoring hour and also Lucy's um, uh, question. So we'll answer these two questions in the next mentoring hour. Thank you all for joining the mentoring hour and for your questions. It was very interesting and I hope you all uh, enjoy this mentoring hour. Um, have a blessed uh, day and uh, God bless. Thank you.